What's up everyone, I am Jason C and today we got some Ardbeg. Ardbeg to be technical. Yes, it's got a pirate theme, so I gotta, I guess, try to sound like a pirate. I think some people just like to say Ardbeg that way. I don't know. But that is the name of this new committee release that's a tribute to Mickey Heads, their legendary distillery manager who retired after 13 years. Let's talk a bit more about the committee releases, taste this new expression, blind it against Ugadal and Korovyekin, and answer the question, are these still worth the cash right here on the Mash and Drum? So according to the Ardbeg website, it says it's a quirky fact that Isla, with a population of just 3,000, has more than 140 committees, and the biggest one of all is the Ardbeg Committee, with a worldwide membership of over 120,000 and counting. Now just three years after reopening on January 1st, 2000, Ardbeg Distillery launched the Ardbeg Committee, an Ardbeg fan club that's no charge to join and offers members access to special releases and other fun perks. Now the distillery closed in 1996, and the goal was to build up a fan base strong enough to ensure that they would never ever close again, and so far it's worked. One fun perk of joining the Ardbeg Committee release is access to exclusive bottles. Now a lot of the early releases were available by mail order and took time to sell out, but as Ardbeg's fan base grew, it became a lot harder to acquire a bottle. With all the committee releases that have been released over the years, only since 2008, alongside the committee releases, which are typically cast strength, Ardbeg usually brings out a more widely available version of the whiskey, typically bottled at 46% ABV. So some of the older committee releases were pretty legendary, but more recent ones like Ardbeg Grooves, Black, Supernova, and Drum have been loved by many, but also not so loved because they're non-H stated and most feel like it's young whiskey in those bottles with just an interesting finish wrapped around it. Now committee releases usually have a retail price of around $180 to $200. Now, you compare those to some of the formidable core range releases that Arbeg actually has available on the shelf at half the price or less, it could be a tough buy for a lot of people. But these committee releases usually have a great story, great artwork, and for Ardbeg super fans, must buys no matter what. That brings us to this latest committee release, the Ardbeg. Yes, I'm gonna have to just keep saying it like a pirate. So this new release is a single malt that has been matured only in X rye whiskey casks and comes complete with Mickey Heads the Pirate on the bottle as well. Now Mickey commented on his departure and his release saying it was an absolute pleasure to spend the last 13 years heading the crew at the greatest distillery on earth. I had the best team of people anyone could wish for and I'm proud that we've been responsible for producing so many wonderful art bags along the way. Now when it came to this bottle, he said that I'm honored that a place that has already given me so much would celebrate my retirement in such a thoughtful way and to have my image on a bottle, that's a dream come true. Who knows what retirement holds for me, but I know I'll be spending a lot of time fishing. Not a bad way to spend retirement, Mickey. As for the Ard Bay Committee release, it is bottled at 51.8% ABV, which is cast strength, it's non-chill filtered, and retails, as I mentioned, for about 180 bucks. All right guys, so let's first talk about the bottle. Bottle is the classic Ardbeg shape. Love the artwork on these committee releases. You have Mickey Heads on the front, pointing wayward <laughs> towards his retirement uh, as a pirate, which is pretty damn cool. There's also a really cool story about Mickey Heads on the back, really nice tribute to him, really classy move I think by Ardbeg. So what we're gonna do first is review this and see if those x rye whiskey cast uh, notes really come out. Uh, it seems to be coming out a little bit more the more I go to it. This will be about my fourth or fifth pour, which is a really good idea to do, especially with smoky scotches. They just seem to develop and get a little bit more interesting once, some, um, once it oxidizes a little bit. Uh, then what we're going to do is compare it to the Ugadal and the Korovyekin, two of my favorite core range releases that are on the shelf that are pretty much less than half the price of this bottle. So let's see uh, what we get on this one first. Here we go. So the, the rye whiskey note is coming out more and more in this. When I first opened this, it basically smelled like the 10 year to me. You know, the, the, the real core, you know, flavor profile for Ardbeg, obviously it's very smoky, it's peaty. There's some lemon zest in there, usually a little bit of dark chocolate you pick up too. It's meaty, there's like a bacon note to it. You could pull as, as many flavors 
as you can think of out of a whiskey like this, especially a peated scotch. Uh, but for this one in the beginning, wasn't really getting that rye note, that rye punch, but now after it's oxidized, just like most, especially smoky scotches, it really, really is jumping out of the glass here. A lot of vanilla. You definitely get the rye spice hint there. But it is sweet. I am getting a lot of vanilla as well. It's a lot fruitier than I thought it was going to be. I'm getting this mix of, so I usually get a lot of citrus, a lot of orange peel when it comes to rye whiskeys in general. But in here, I am getting a little bit of orange in there, but it's kind of mixed up with like an orange and a peach. There is some spice there as well. But the one thing that blows it, like for those of you bourbon drinkers that haven't really experienced an Ardbeg or a Smoky Scotch, you know, it's, it's hard to get past that medicinal, the iodine and the, and the peat smoke at first. But, and if that's the first scotch you're introduced to, it could really put you off at the beginning. But what a lot of people miss is when you go back to a smoky scotch like this, all the fruit flavors that develop, all the sweetness, the vanillas, the caramels, everything that jumps out of the glass. And for this one, this is a, a prime example of that type of experience with a smoky scotch. I mean, this has all the smoke and all the peat that you would expect when you first crack it open, but this thing is just opened up. Getting like a poached pear note, like a brown sugar, cinnamon, pears. The citrus is there. Definitely the orange spice. A little bit of dark chocolate behind there too. The, the You know, that Ardbeg backbone is never going to go away. I mean, it's so strong. All right, let's see if the rye component is now developing a little bit more in the palate here. Here we go. All right, so on the palate... Okay, there's the rye spice. More on the back end than the front. The front, it's all Ardbeg. It's, it's smoke, it's peat. A little bit of like smoked bacon, little dark chocolate. The, the spiciness though of it is the one component that kind of, it, it's there from front to back. As soon as this hits the front of your tongue, you get a nice little tingling, you know, note to it. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, there's a black pepper that goes through the entire thing. The, the rye spice, the little bit of a citrus punch is there, especially on the very, very back end of the finish. It just lingers, it's spicy. If you've ever had the Oogadol or the Korvyakin where it's a little bit more fruit, well, the Korvyakin definitely has more of a spice punch, but the Oogadol, which we'll test it against after this, um, is, you know, it's a little bit sweeter, a little bit more rounded. This is definitely bringing the spice from that rye cask, but you're also getting the caramel, the vanillas, that fruit note is, is still there. I'm still getting the hint of like the peach and the pear. It's kind of there, but it's a little bit subtle all, under all the smoke and the spice. Let's go for another sip. All right, so third sip, again, you get more of the smoke, more of the peat. It's keeping that Ardbeg consistency that I love. And the rye spice is still hanging on. The fruit is not as punchy as I thought it would be coming off the nose. I mean, it's there, but it's really getting overtaken by the spice the more you the more you sip this. But again, I, I was hoping it'd get a little bit more developed as, you know, the more you sip this. Let's go for another sip. Again, it's classic Ardbeg. I feel like it's everything I'm getting from Ardbeg 10, and it's just, you know, has some more rye spice on the back end. A little bit more citrus, the peach, and that rye spice that lingers on. The, the thing with these committee releases is, you know, and I know a lot of people love these, especially when they come out every year, there's always, a, seems to be a different finish, but the big, you know, question and some of the, you know, the criticism that these bottles get is, it's basically Ardbeg taking non-age stated, probably young peated whiskey, you know, anywhere from six to 10 years old, just finishing it in some funky cask or aging it in a cask and then charging you 200 bucks for it. And that is a very, very valid point. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test that theory, being this is 200, and then you have two $70 to $80 bottles that are longtime favorites on the shelf of mine in the Oogadol and the Korvyakin, and let's see how this stacks up blind. All right, guys, so let's do a quick blind with the Ardbeg committee release against Korvyakin and Oogadol, which are two of my favorites in the core range other than the 10-year. Now, Ardbeg Korvyakin, which means Cauldron of the Speckled Sea, is a whirlpool, the second largest in the world located between the Isles of Isla and Jura. 
Now this is also non-age stated, but it's supposedly Ardbeg 10 with whiskey added that spent its life exclusively in French limousine virgin casks. Yes, I love French oak. This is bottled at 57.1 ABV and about 70 bucks. Now this is the Oogadol, first launched in 2003, uh, or the Oogie as they call it. It's a marriage of some young and some very old Oloroso sherry aged single malt along with the Ardbeg Agent X bourbon barrels. Now, the name Oogadol means a dark, mysterious place. It is also the name of the lock from which Ardbeg gets its water. Now, this is bottled at cast strength, 54.2% ABV, and non age stated as well, and it also retails for about 76 bucks. All right, so I have all three poured blind here, so let's uh, go for a quick mix up. All right, let's start with number one, see what we get here. Oh, wow, is that sweet. That is just super fruity. Getting like a roasted banana note on there. A lot of dark fruits, dark chocolate. It's all like wrapped around like that meaty bacon smoke that Ardbeg is so known for. I love it. Man, that, that has a wonderful nose. Let's go to the middle one here. All right, this is bringing me back to uh, the peaches and the pears, a little bit lighter. It's actually lighter when compared to the other two here. It looks lighter. Very vanilla, very caramel. Not nearly as dark fruity as number one. Man, number one is just really rich. I mean, the dark chocolate note coming off that one is insane. Number two is just brighter. More, you know, a little bit more pear, peach, apple. Little hints of banana here too. Not like that dark banana that I'm getting in this one. I'm also getting the citrus here, number two as well. All right, let's go to number three. Oh, number three is just, number three has like a nutty, like a nutty, like almost like a dusty bourbon note thing going on to it. It's really, it's really cool on the nose. It just seems like darker and, this might be the darkest one out of the, uh, the three here. More of that chocolate's coming through, getting like a black cherry note in this. Like dark chocolate pomegranate I'm getting in this one. That's crazy. Definitely the smoke is there. The meatiness is there. The smoke, the iodine. Yeah, I'm actually picking up a hint of banana in all three of these now, which is interesting. All right, let's try number one on the palate. Ooh, that is a smoky, ashy. <laughs> that thing is a beast. Wow. Yeah, the dark chocolate notes really punching through in the back end. The like the crispy, like pre, like right before burnt bacon note I'm getting on there as well. Another sip. See on this one, I'm getting those fruits. Those dark fruits that are, you know, the, that are almost smoked. Like the like dark fruits that you're roasting on a barbecue, all coming through. It's very sweet, but it's also very spicy, punchy. Hmm. <laughs> that one is really good. Getting a little bit of the oak tan in there. It's a little bit probably the oaky, definitely oakier than the Ard bag we just tried, uh, which makes me think it's maybe got some more age to it. I, I just love the mix of smoke and sweet and dark fruits in that one. And the spiciness that's just lingering on. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic scots right there. Let's try the middle one here. Cheers. Man, this one just kind of dies coming off of number one. This one, I mean, it's bright, it's fruity. Getting way more banana now on the palate on number two. The banana's there, and then here, there's a nice spice lingering on the back end, which makes me think that could be the Ardbeg, the committee release, the Ardbeg, the Mickey Heads one. Getting that little punch of, uh, again, the pear, the peach, the, the citrus punch right in the back end as well. Nice spiciness to it. Another sip. Yeah, that like pear and peach notes mixing with banana now. More bananas coming through uh, along with the smoke. Definitely, definitely getting more of the banana on the nose as well. As soon as you bring it up to your, uh, as soon as I bring it up to my nose, I get like a little banana peel uh, whiff there. But coming off of number one, number one is just coming off as completely a lot richer and has a lot more depth to it. All right, let's go to number three now, which had a really delicious nose. Oh man. 
It's like dark and dusky and musty and all the good things. Cheers. Oh, okay. Three came off a lot softer on the back end than I thought it would. The smoke is there, but I mean, this is very fruity, but very rounded. The smoke and the spice punch that you're getting on one and two didn't really get on that first sip. Let's try again here. Wow. It's, a, it's an incredible variation from all three. The third one has that dark, dusky, like dark fruit. There's a nuttiness characteristic there, the dark chocolate, all that comes through on the, on the nose. On the palate, you get that, you get it on the palate as well. But on the back end, it's, it's a lot softer. It's a lot more rounded. But then right on the very, very, very end of the finish, you get this another burst of like a dark fruit flavor, um, like a raisin, which maybe, which might be the sherry cask. It might be the Oogadol. Um, I don't know, because number one here also had those dark fruits too. But let's go for one last sip here, then we'll find out. I'll rank them and then uh, see which one's my favorite. Number three drink, so easy and so rounded. That, that's a date, whichever bottle that is, that's dangerous because I could sit there and drink that all night. It's not, I mean, you have three, you know, over 50% ABVs here. Uh, and this one is drinking like it's, you know, barely 50%. Crazy. Really, really good on, uh, on all three of them. Uh, let's rank them. All right, guys, so this is how I'm gonna rank them. Number one was definitely my favorite. Uh, the dark fruits, the, the spiciness of it from front to back, the little punch of spice I was getting on the back end. It was so balanced. Uh, it had the Ardbeg characteristics I love, but mixed with some dark fruits in there as well. Um, some spiciness. Uh, I'm gonna put number three as my second place, and lastly, number uh, number two. So let's find out what the last one is. I thought that this was the Ard bag because of the softer, the sweet, uh, the sweet flavors I was getting, you know, as when I was mentioning the peach and the banana. And there you go, the $200 committee release for this year comes in last for me. I mean, it's great, I can understand the tribute to Mickey Heads, who's a legend, uh, I get it. Uh, but when compared to the two core range releases that are available for 70 and 78 bucks, this one didn't wasn't even nearly in the same ballpark. So I'm gonna guess the one I have in second place that was number three. I'm gonna guess that was the Oogadol. Now I haven't had the Oogadol in a while, but that softer finish, the fruit, that sherry cask uh, influence with the nuttiness, the raisin I was getting, I'm thinking that's what that was. Let's see if I was right. It's the Oogie. Which means Cor of Yekin, the French limousine cask finish, still remains my favorite uh, of the Ardbeg, you know, the core range. Well, I mean, this is Ardbeg Dark Cove, which is probably my favorite Ardbeg of all time. Just ridiculously good. But, so, so the point being here is, like, like I said, if you're an Ardbeg super fan, you're going to want to get every committee release that comes out because they are interesting and they are different. So maybe it's true, maybe Ardbeg doesn't have a whole stock of aged whiskeys, or if they do, the ultra aged stuff is being saved for future releases. Maybe the committee releases have gone a little bit younger and they're just throwing in a different cask to finish in or, or a blend and you know making something a little bit more interesting you know, for the younger whiskey. I think no matter what Ardbeg puts out, the Ardbeg super fans are gonna buy it, they're gonna love it. But if you're on a budget and you don't wanna pay 200 bucks for something that seemingly is a little bit younger, these two core range offerings are absolutely unbelievable. The Oogadol is just a sherry. You, you get all the sherry influence, the raisin, the nuttiness, the, little, the, the, the dark fruits that come through, the dark chocolate on the back end, and it's very rounded and refined. It's not a huge smoke punch in the back end. And then we have the core of Yekin that is just an absolute beast. It's dark, it's dusty, it's musty, it's, it's rich, it's fruity, it's chocolatey, but it's also spicy. Gives you such an amazing experience from front to back on the palate. Absolutely love the core of Yekin or the Cori as they call it. Definitely my pick. And like I said, if you don't want to pay the 200 bucks, you could pay 70, 80 bucks for either of these two. And you know, you don't have to break the bank to get a really, really good Ardbeg. I do always look forward to the Ardbeg committee releases. 
but I just really hope they start, you know, maybe getting back to some age statements, maybe getting back to putting some older whiskey in there rather than putting in, you know, what seems to be a younger, younger whiskey with just a finish wrapped around it. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Ardbeg Committee release. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. I know I normally do bourbon reviews, but you know, every now and then, it's really good to get into a good single malt scotch, especially a nice smoky Ardbeg, uh, and especially one that's dedicated to Mickey Heads, who is a, who is a legend in the, uh, the Ardbeg world. So cheers to him, cheers to Ardbeg, and like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.